about two miles are the big rivers, about 16 miles, 10 miles or 16 kilometers, that's where your planes go, commercial flight. Uh, the jet stream is also a little bit above that, and that's where the military planes, they fly in the jet stream. You have to go out 25 kilometers or 15 miles to get the ozone layer. Uh, and military flights basically now are so high, they're up 52,000 feet, they're in the ozone layer. So, you know, when they tell you that it's your underarm deodorant, the ozone problem, <laughs> you just think about these jet planes that are right up there in the ozone layer, wrecking it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you go out about 80 kilometers or 50 miles, you're in the electrojet. The satellites are 500 kilometers, so they're 312 miles up off the surface of the Earth. So our ionosphere goes out about 600 kilometers. So, you know, this is, this is pretty far out, but um, what is New York? About 600 kilometers. So if we think of the distance of New York, but straight up, uh, is the top of the ionosphere. Then going way out to 51,000 kilometers is magnetic sphere. And you have the Van Allen belts up there, which are belts that protect the earth and they collect elect, uh, electrical particles that will then in a few seconds they go from the North Pole to the South Pole. This is quite an amazing structure and we sit inside of it. We're cocooned inside of this structure. The moon is out at 484 kilometers or 240 miles. Earth's gravity goes out about 1.6 kilometers, million kilometers, or a million miles is our Earth's gravity. As the sun is almost 100 million miles away. So, I mean, this is a fantastic structure. And that's only a little part of the universe. I hope some of you heard Miriam last year uh, when she told us about the cosmos. So I'm just taking a little piece of it and saying this is this is where we live. This is our Earth. This is a document which you can send for from the Pentagon. This tells you what the military is doing. And they, uh, they see space, that dominating space means dominating the Earth. Right? So they used to have forces on the land and the sea and the sky, but now they have space forces and they have space controls. Uh, and they're pre preparing for space wars. And I think just from what I showed you about these uh, structures, can you imagine what a little war is up there? You know, remember we're still within gravity, so it still all comes down on the Earth besides destroying our life support system. This is what's protecting us. I tried to write up what was going on. I went as close to what's classified as I could in my book, and so you'll find a lot more detail there, and if you forget things, you, you know, you'll find it written down there. But um, I did want to point out the uh, total disregard the military has for our Earth support system. Uh, they discovered the Van Allen belts in 1958 in January, and by September they had blown them up with nuclear bombs. You know, I mean, that, they wanted to try bombs at every level above the Earth, and here was something new, Van Allen belts. They described it as the most uh, wonderful experiment that ever took place on Earth, and they simultaneously blew up the belt from the Atlantic, South Atlantic Ocean, and the middle of the Pacific Ocean. They set the uh, nuclear bombs on rockets, set them up, and let them explode in the middle of the Van Allen belt. So basically, from the moment they were discovered, uh, not even six months later, they blew them up. They created uh, hundreds of new Van Allen belts, and the scientists are saying it might take a hundred years to go back to where it, way it was before they did this. 
So this is still, still not uh, healed. Now geophysical war, which is war using the Earth, using the Earth system. You know how wild a storm can be? Uh, I mean, we just had one last week, so you, you must be conscious. But you know what hurricanes are like and tornadoes and uh, electrical storms, uh, floods. All these kinds of things are fantastic weapons of war. Okay, and back in 1966, they were beginning to say we could use these for military purposes. And it was in the Vietnam War that they first tried to use geophysical warfare. What they can't do is they can't manufacture a big storm out of nothing. But what they try to do is take something that's already occurring and put energy into it and make it worse. Okay, so they try to make more violent storms. Uh, it's, uh, it, they, they can't make something out of nothing, but they can make a bad storm worse. And they can try to manipulate these things like the river, the uh, atmospheric rivers and the jet stream to uh, locate where the storm will be. There were two projects during the uh, Vietnam War. They were called Project Skyfire and Project Storm Fury. And they actually did try to cause uh, storms. They also tried to deplete the ozone layer over Vietnam in particular to cause problems. Anything they could do. It was the time that they attacked the earth with the pesticides and defoliants. So it was really the first war where there were direct attacks on the earth and direct attempts to manipulate the earth. Uh, this, um, this use of the earth as weapon uh, in the Vietnam War was what was behind the uh, United Nations uh, resolution that you couldn't use uh, as a, you couldn't use the Earth systems as a warfare agent. So since then, it's it's not a well worded document, it's not a well worded treaty. Since then, they say, well, we're manipulating the atmosphere to increase the crop yield. We're not doing it for war. So all you have to do is have a different purpose, and you can do these things. Now, the U.S. Uh, Congress stopped the funding in around 1972 for these Project Skyfire and Project Storm Fury, but it was refunded last year. Okay, they're refunded now. These are, again, they've been, you know, going quietly, but they're now refunded active programs. I don't know if you can see this well, but this... Uh, this is the Earth. That's the bottom of um, South America. And this is the Antarctic. So you get an idea of the size of the ozone hole. What you might not know is that the ozone hole was originally created by uh, the atmospheric nuclear test. So they depleted the ozone layer by 4 to 8 percent by uh, their bombing, their uh, nuclear atmospheric testing. And uh, that is uh, now a major problem, major, major problem, okay? If we lose the ozone layer, then there's nothing up there to capture the ultraviolet light. And so within two years, uh, you can have no life on the planet. Uh, the Southern Hemisphere also has their bomb tests. And uh, the other thing that hurts the ozone layer were the conquered uh, plains. Some of you uh, re may, might remember the big discussion in the newspapers around 1972-73 about whether or not commercial flight should be uh, supersonic. And the only ones that went ahead with it were the British and French with the Concords. 
But uh, the one to, the, the argument was right in the newspaper for everybody to read is the reason that they didn't have commercial supersonic flights.